And that's when I knew that I couldn't hide from anyone in the town. Hi, my name is Logan and I just spent a year living in rural Japan. I lived on an island in Kyushu that was closer to Korea than Japan. Every rural town in Japan is different, of course, but here are some of my experiences about what it means to live in rural Japan as a foreigner or in general. Number one is stores. Japan is known for its convenience stores, right? In my city, there were three convenience stores, but two of them were more than an hour and a half drive away. I was lucky to have one near me that I could walk to in 15 minutes, but it was only open from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Most convenience stores in Japan are open 24 hours. And of course, there was a supermarket nearby, but that was about it. There was no movie theater and no good place to buy clothes. My area had a good amount of restaurants, but some days or times they were randomly closed. I guess that was good because it forced me to cook for myself most days, and it also helped me to save money because I didn't have much to spend money on besides groceries, rent, and my car. Two, driving. Japan has great public transportation, right? Yes, it does, except for when it doesn't. In my city, we didn't have any trains and the bus schedule was very limited. Everyone had to drive or ride a bicycle everywhere they go. It took me a while to get used to driving in Japan because in Japan, they drive on the left side of the road, but I was used to driving on the right side in the US. One thing I noticed that's different from things I've seen in the U.S. is I saw people leave their car on and leave their keys in the car and leave their car outside a store while they go inside to buy something. I guess you can really trust people in rural Japan. Number three is bugs. In the summer especially, the bugs really come out. You can hear the cicadas outside. They're so loud. I also heard bugs hit my window at night when the lights were still on inside my apartment, but it was dark outside. And in my apartment, there were a good amount of bugs. At some point, I feel like I saw a spider every single day. Luckily, I didn't have any huge huntsman spiders like I heard other ALTs have, but I do have one story. If you're squirmy about bugs, maybe skip ahead one minute or so. There was a big bug in my apartment one day. I saw it move across the floor when I opened a door. I thought it was a cockroach, but I'm not exactly sure if it was, but it was cockroach sized and really fast. I eventually trapped it in a room where it couldn't hide and I was trying to catch it with a small rice bowl so that I could bring it outside. I really didn't want to squish it because it was really big. So eventually I placed the bowl over the bug and then I realized that the bug was so fast that it got cut in half by my bowl. <laughs> It was the grossest thing I ever experienced and I quickly moved the bowl so that the whole bug would be trapped underneath so that I could put it outside even though it was still moving and it was cut in half. Looking back on it, I probably should have just used bug spray like my supervisor told me to. But I don't know, I didn't think that it would work for like such a big bug. Number four is foreign foods. One thing that's probably true about most places in rural Japan is that it'll be hard to find a good variety of foreign foods or non-Japanese foods. Sure, in Tokyo there are Mexican restaurants, a place to buy good cheese, Thai food, and decent pizza, but likely not in rural Japan. But there's always Amazon if you want to buy ingredients to make things yourself. Number five is young people. If you're moving to rural Japan, 
as a foreigner, you'll probably be looking for friends. If you know some Japanese and want to make Japanese friends your age, chances are there might not be many. In my town, most people leave the city after graduating high school or some of them even go to high school in a different city. They might come back later on in life to settle down and have kids, but the average age in rural Japan can be pretty high. Number six is fashion. Every time I visited a big city in Japan, I remembered how fashionable Japanese people dress every day. Maybe this goes along with having more young people or in cities in general you just see more people when you use public transportation but I never noticed people's fashion in the town I was living in and every time I went to a city it was like I was in a different world because of how dressed up everyone was. Number seven is no English. If you travel to Tokyo or Kyoto or any other big tourist destination in Japan, you can probably get away with using English and people will generally be able to understand you and take your order or help you with whatever. But in my rural town, I would be very surprised if someone spoke or even understood English, unless they were an English teacher or something. For ordering in restaurants, buying groceries, and even teaching in elementary schools, I realized that using Japanese, no matter how broken it is, is much more effective than trying to get other people to understand English. Number eight. Darkness. In some places, there are no street lights, which means it can get very dark at night. If people go walking or running at night, I see them wear reflective straps over their upper body. Some people carry flashlights too. Although it was rural, one thing there was no shortage of was vending machines. Even in the middle of nowhere, when you're driving, you can be sure to find a vending machine to stop and pick up a drink. And at night, the vending machines would look so cool because you could be in the middle of darkness and the only thing glowing is the vending machine. I thought it looked pretty cool. Number nine is that you might stand out. If you don't look Japanese, you might stand out. And even if you do look Japanese, once people know that you're the foreigner in town, they'll probably notice you wherever you go, even if you're not paying attention. I have a couple stories to illustrate this. So I taught at a lot of different schools, like seven. One day it was Halloween and we were having a Halloween party, so I wore a costume at school. Then the next week at another school, one of the students was telling everyone about how I was wearing a costume last week, even though it was at a different school. Apparently his mom worked at that school or something and she showed him a picture of me wearing the costume. It's a small town, so everyone knows everyone and word gets around fast. Another time I was driving and it was fall time and I wanted to take a picture of the fall leaves that I saw on the side of the road. So I pulled over safely and got out of my car to take some pictures. Then the next week at school, a teacher told me that she saw me taking pictures on the side of the road. And that's when I knew that I couldn't hide from anyone in the town. Number 10 is beautiful scenery and uniqueness. I might have talked too much about things that rural Japan is lacking, but I think rural Japan is great and has a ton of beauty without the crowds of other bigger cities in Japan. If you're going to live in or visit rural Japan, find out what's special about your city and explore it. Every town in Japan is unique, and even if it's just rice fields, I'm sure you can find a lot of beauty in the landscapes and people of the town. Okay, so those are 10 things I noticed while living in rural Japan. Let me know what you think in the comments below and remember to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe. See you next time!
By the way, this is the shirt from the island that I was living on, and it says Yamaneko Crossing, like it says Wildcat Crossing, and it has the Tsushima Leopard Cat. 